Hello and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is one of those people who might be somewhat detached from reality and so they never stop to surprise us. A couple of months ago, you may remember this, he stated that both Russia and China are to blame for Germany's economic crisis. Well, this week, Olaf Scholz shared yet another interesting thought, yet another perspective about why Germany has to pay more for energy resources. According to his version, the Russian president decided to stop gas deliveries. Take a look. And Russland, yeah, Russland has the energy Versorgung Europas eingestellt. Mancher von der AfD und mancher von den Leuten, die immer alles querdenken, hat es ja immer noch anders in der Erzählung. Aber es war der russische Präsident, der die Gaslieferung durch die heile Pipeline gestoppt hat. Russia stopped supplying energy to Europe, he said, and it was the Russian president who stopped gas supplies through a functioning gas pipeline, thus raising energy prices across Europe. Of course, we all know what happened with Nord Stream. That is old news at this point, and we won't focus on that in this video. But not surprisingly, the statement made by Scholz received an immediate response from Russia. Dmitry Medvedev, Russia's ex-president, replied on X. The German is lying through his teeth, said Medvedev. They rejected it themselves. They screwed over their own people because of their hatred for Russia, and now they're dodging and lying. So it's quite interesting and quite embarrassing, to be completely honest, to see Scholz trying to play the blame game when his economy has been in a downward spiral four quarters in a row the entire year, the entire 2023. German Chancellor must have forgotten that they embargoed, they banned imports, and they confiscated property. And now the German people are the ones having to pay for these policies. I know I have subscribers from Germany who commented before on my previous videos and said that everything we hear about their economy struggling is in fact true. And in addition to that, Germany's economic troubles are affecting the rest of the EU. Eurozone recession signs are increasing according to the latest data. According to Germany's statistics office, output in Germany fell to 0.4% as of October. This is the lowest level since August of 2020. And this isn't isolated to Germany. France and Italy are experiencing similar declines in GDP. Eurozone GDP shrank by 0.1% as of the end of the third quarter. A couple of months ago, France-based Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development issued a warning that as global economies are slowing down due to higher interest rates, higher borrowing costs, that is, and weaker trade, Germany will suffer badly. The forecast says that Germany will be the only G20 country apart from Argentina to shrink this year. It's no surprise that Germany is expected to experience a heavy blow. The OECD chief economist Claire Lombardelli commented, You're seeing weaker growth across all of Europe, but Germany is probably the largest example. You're seeing the impact of inflation on real incomes that has been suppressing consumer demand. And you're seeing impact of monetary tightening. Germany, perhaps more than other EU economies, is affected by the slowdown in China, it exports a lot to China as well as imports, so it's a combination of factors. Now, I would like to unpack those last couple of sentences. China isn't to blame here at all, precisely for the reason that Germany adopted policies to move away from trading with China. It called it decoupling from China. Germany said that it chooses not to rely on Chinese imports and German businesses are now very strongly encouraged or in other words forced to seek alternative suppliers for parts and materials. Yet unfortunately the EU narrative is to misrepresent its own choices in a way that puts others in a bad light. Germany's economy is unlikely to recover anytime soon, as many companies are relocating abroad or decreasing production, indicating that the country may be starting to deindustrialize. Here's AP reporting that even a CEO of a major German chemical company, Evonik Industries, 
says Germany's biggest risk is deindustrialization as high energy costs as well as government inaction on variety of chronic problems threaten to send new factories and high paying jobs abroad. There is an entire video on Germany deindustrializing that I uploaded several days ago. You're welcome to watch that video next for additional context and additional news. I will link it in the description below for you if you're interested to watch. Let me know what you think about Olaf Scholz blaming Russia for stopping to export natural gas to Europe. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching the video. Please remember to give it a like and consider sharing it. Your support does matter. Subscribe to my channels on Rumble and on YouTube. I would love to have you back for my next one tomorrow. And if you enjoy reading, I encourage you to find me on Substack where among other types of content, you will find a weekly newsletter with the key events and key economic data that will help you stay up to date on the most important news. I upload the newsletter on Fridays. So I will see you in my new one tomorrow. Have a great rest of your night. Bye for now. Wir haben Ihnen geholfen und wir werden das weiter tun, dass Sie diese schwere Zeit durchstehen können. Wir haben dafür gesorgt und gekämpft, dass es Möglichkeiten gibt, Getreideexporte aus Russland und der Ukraine in diese Welt kommen zu lassen, was wichtig ist. Aber wir wir wissen auch, dass es darüber hinaus Konsequenzen gegeben hat, die uns und Europa auch betreffen. Denn gestiegene, gestiegene Energiepreise, mit denen mussten wir auch kämpfen. Fast eine Verzehnfachung, manchmal noch mehr, war plötzlich auf den Märkten zu bezahlen, um noch Energie zu bekommen. Und Russland, ja Russland hat die Energieversorgung Europas eingestellt. Mancher von der AfD und mancher von den Leuten, die immer alles querdenken, hat es ja immer noch anders in der Erzählung. Aber es war der russische Präsident, der die Gaslieferung durch die heile Pipeline gestoppt hat.